Hey nerds, welcome back. I'm Tyler. Today, I'm gonna to talk about 3D printing in a workshop setting. Now don't shy away yet. I've been to the motherland and it's as glorious as we all thought it was. What if I was to tell you with 3D printing, you could make things while you sleep overnight, you could make things while you eat a sandwich, you could even make things while you drink a beer. Drink a beer. You can't drink beer in a workshop. With 3D printing, you can. Gasp. This porter was paid for by Larry, a viewer just like you. Thanks, Larry. So really quick, before we get into some of the things that I've printed and some of the practical uses, I think, that we're all gonna benefit from a machine like this, let me talk about the machines specifically that I have some experience with. These are both Creality K1 machines. This is the Creality K1. This is the Creality K1 Max. The main difference between the two machines, the Creality K1 has about eight and a half inch build plate volume, eight and a half inches on the X axis, eight and a half inches on the Y axis. And the K1 Max has close to a foot. So it's 11.8 inches on the X and Y axis. And baby, if three inches doesn't impress you, the Max also comes with a couple of technological upgrades. This has AI LiDAR, which is basically a detection system to be able to tell if your print is failing and it'll stop it from continuing so you don't waste all your filament. This also comes with a camera on board that you can check on your prints even if you're not home or in another room. And a couple other features, I'm gonna leave some links in the description so you can check the manufacturer specs to compare the two. All right, let's look at some of the things I made. One of the first things that I designed and printed off were these little battery holders. Now I'm sure you've seen these around somewhere. I didn't invent these by any means, but I did design these myself and it's a great little exercise. So what you do is you take your batteries. It doesn't really matter the company that you're using and the battery that you have. Use little digital calipers and measure all the little intricacies of your battery and then basically create a negative space for this to sit in. Now I've got a battery holder to keep my batteries off of my bench and it's locked in place so that if I come by, I won't accidentally knock it off. These are fairly cheap online to buy. It's like $20 for five of them or something like that. But for me to print five of them off after I design them, only cost me like a dollar in filament. But the neat thing is there's websites out there that you can download print files from people who are much better at modeling than I am and some of them are free. I'll see if I could find them and I'll put links in the description you guys can check those out. But let's move over to another item that I printed. Here's a neat tool that I made based off of the Craig version. So this is a hinge jig drill guide. So I can clamp this to a cabinet door and then run my router through here with a bearing guide and very quickly and easily hollow out the material I need for a the cup of a hinge. And as you can see here, the hinge fits right inside. It also has two little holes so that I know where to drill the, uh, the mounting holes for the screws here. I also created a little setup block that I could use for the router to place the router on here and get the perfect depth to hollow out the perfect hole for the hinge. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to demo that. So the first step is going to be to set the depth of my router bit and I drop my the plunge router over top here till it bottoms out and then I just tighten down the depth stop. I bring it back up. So now this should be, when maxed out, let's test it, this should be the same depth as this guide block here, and it is. Next, I'm gonna align the drill guide up against the edge of the style here. This would represent a style from a cabinet door. And I'll clamp it down, making sure that it stays flush on the side. So we've got that nice and sturdy. And here we go. Freaking sweet, man, it's perfect. So that is a win in my book, dude. Also, let me just say that the setup guide, just 
The idea of having a bunch of setup blocks is really neat for all types of different situations. You could have a setup for your table saw, for dados, or for your router for dados, or all kinds of different things. I don't know, whatever you could think of. I don't want to bore you guys with all the ideas and some of the things that I printed off, but here's another one. If you don't want a square profile on the edge of a surface, this little guy locks in here and then you follow that with the router and you can get that rounded edge. So here's another neat idea for 3D printing I haven't really seen on the internet, and that is to print off your designs that you're drafting to see them in real life. So for me, this is a little stool sample <laughs> that I printed off to double check to make sure that the legs aren't too chonky, that the aprons and the stretchers aren't too thin, and that the top doesn't look too thin or too thick. So it's cool, you could see all of the ratios and how things work together in real life, not just on a computer program. And let me just say, if you've been watching 3D printing videos like I have been before I decided on this, it is as satisfying as it looks to remove it from the bed. So here we go. Oh, yeah, dude. Here's a sample of the sound that it makes. It's actually quite quiet. I'm not entirely sure how the microphone's gonna pick this up. Outside of using 3D printing for tools or entertainment purposes like toys, you could use it for a lot of that hobby work that you've been working on. And that could be cars, stereo equipment, firearms, really anything you could think of. I wanna use 3D printing to make money. Now, this is something that I was inspired by Travis from Shop Nation. Now, I don't see myself, and you probably don't see yourself, with a big print farm. Sorry, Travis. I just don't have the space for it right now, and maybe that's something I could work up to if I was interested in it. But in the meantime, I am interested in making designs for things that solve problems that I encounter every day. And that may be with tools, it may be some life problem. I just used 3D printing to create a little bracket to hold a sound bar up underneath my entertainment center. I thought that was super sick. That was one of the first things I used it for. If that was a big problem that a lot of people were having, that's something that I could market to sell and make some money from. Now, I don't really plan on selling the actual item itself, but I could sell the files. The neat thing about that as a seller is I don't have to worry about shipping. I don't have to worry about costs for filament or time or electricity to run these machines. There's a lot of other costs associated with upkeep. These things do wear out eventually. So selling files is sick. Now you would likely want a couple machines on hand so you can design the file and then print it out and use it in reality to see how it works. But that's a pretty small cost for what the potential is for sales. Especially if you're solving a super annoying problem that everybody encounters, just like Travis. He solved such an easy problem, and the solution wasn't necessarily easy, but the problem was so easy to see. Everybody complains about the dust collection on the DeWalt miter saw. Everybody does. And everyone complains about dust collection on a ton of miter saws. So what did Travis do? He took that information, he compiled a list, he bought some of the saws, and then he designed a solution for them. And now he's making cheddar. So for me, that was a huge inspiration as to why I want to get into 3D printing. The physical items are going to be cool to solve the issue that I have, but I'm really excited to open that solution up to the market and see how many other people are interested in it as well. So if you want to follow along and benefit from some of the designs that I come up with, check out my Patreon. Otherwise, I'll be listing those designs for sale in my online stores. All the links in the description. That's it for this video. Thanks for hanging and printing with me today, you guys. I'll see you next time.